Hey everyone, Teo here. Today I'm comparing the Mark Levinson number 5909 to the T Plus A Solitaire T. Both are high res wireless headphones designed for audiophiles or for people who just want that extra level of audio quality for their music. So in this video, I'm just going to present to you my findings so that you can decide whether or not they are worth the money. First of all, a disclaimer, this is a review unit on loan from Clarity Group, the company that's selling this. And Clarity Group has many branches around the world, including Singapore, which is the branch that sent this over for review. And this pair of Mark Levinson headphones is mine. Clarity Group actually sent this over many months ago for review, and I liked it so much I bought one for myself. The price for the Mark Levinson is US $999. Here in Singapore, it's $1,613 Singapore dollars. The price of Solitaire T is $1,600 US dollars. And here in Singapore, it's $2,560 Singapore dollars. This video is going to be quite long, so if you want to save time, just check out the text review that I have already written on my blog. The link is in the video description below. And just to give you the bottom line up front for design, I would say the Solitaire T looks better. In terms of sound quality, both are equally matched. Both are able to deliver high res or high definition audio, and the listening experience on both headphones is amazing it's just that they are tuned differently the mark levinson is considered to have a neutral sound profile and these headphones are said to be tuned to the harman curve a theoretical target sound signature that's said to produce the best sound quality that most listeners would prefer and i do find the sound to be neutral the sound has good clarity good details with the high and mids there's just enough bass with energy and the sound overall is very clean active noise cancelling passive sound isolation transparency mode or voice pass all work really well and these are quite comfortable to wear the sound from Solitaire T is slightly warmer. Now you will be able to hear the difference if you have two headphones side by side to compare. And because the sound is slightly warmer, I find these headphones to be slightly less fatiguing to listen to for long listening sessions. You will still be able to get the extra level of details and clarity with this and the bass again also has enough energy. Compared to the Solitaire T, the highs sound slightly brighter and as such the vocals are able to stand out a bit more against the background instruments and the vocals to me sound more centralized as well compared to the vocals on the Solitaire T. The sound stage from Solitaire T has a bit more airiness to that and I actually prefer the sound stage here slightly more than the Mark Levinson's. Both sound amazing. One is not better than the other. So ultimately, choosing between these two will come down to your personal preference to the type of sound that you prefer. So I highly recommend, if possible, to test these headphones in person if you can, because you will only find out which you prefer by testing several headphones. In terms of value for money, the Mark Levinson definitely provides more value for money simply because it's priced significantly lower and you still get amazing audio quality. It's just that the design looks slightly more bulky. One feature that I like about the Mark Levinson that is not available with the Solitaire T is you can connect this to two Bluetooth devices simultaneously and the connection will switch automatically to the device that is playing audio and I find that to be incredibly convenient. So this is the bottom line for these two headphones and now let's get into the nitty gritty details first by looking at the items included. These are the carrying cases for the headphones. I no longer have the packaging box for the Mark Levinson so I cannot show you the box all I can say is the unboxing experience for these two high-end premium headphones is quite an experience. So the size of the two cases is actually quite similar, it's just the shape that is different. 
The material on the Mark Levinson case is slightly rubberized, although it's probably not rubber. And this is designed to repel water, to keep out water, and the zip is designed to keep out water as well. The quality is good. This is a hard case. And the T plus A case has fabric exterior, and the zip is designed to keep out water as well. This is also a hard case. So let's open this up. So these are the cables included with the solitaire T. Even though the solitaire T headphones design is foldable, the carrying case is actually not significantly smaller. So there are three cables included for each headphone and there is a little compartment here for the adapters and for the solar Teddy, this little box is detachable from the main case and this has magnets and these are the adapters inside the interior for both cases is surfaced with felt these are the accessories for mark levinson and these are for the solar T. This is a 4 meter long 3.5 millimeter to USB-C cable. This is a 3 meter long 2.5 millimeter to 4.4 millimeter cable. Next, we have a 3.5 millimeter to USB-C cable. The length is 1.35 meters. And this is a 3.5 millimeter to 2.5 millimeter cable. This is 1.4 meters. The last cable for both is USB-C to USB-C. The length for this is 1.35 meters and this is 1.4 meters. I prefer braided cables and these cables also look better. So T plus A missed an opportunity to make these cables look and feel better. I would also like to mention that the Mark Levinson cables are held together with Velcro. For the Solitaire T, the cables are held together with rubber coated metal cables. These are the last few items. On the Mark Levinson side, there is a microfiber cleaning cloth, the flight adapter, a USB-A to USB-C adapter, a 3.5mm to 6.3mm adapter, for the Solitaire T, this is a 3.5 to 6.3 millimeter adapter, and this is the flight adapter. Let's look at the design. The Mark Levinson is available in three colors, red, black, and gray. On hindsight, I would say the black and gray ones look better than the red. The Solitaire T is available in two colors, black and white. The black is black against silver, and the white is white against silver. For design, I would say the Solitaire T looks better because this design looks more classy. It's understated and it doesn't draw attention to itself. So this is great if you want to blend into the crowd. And the ear cups is, or are less bulky compared to the Mark Levinson, which you can see is quite bulky. When you wear this, the ear cups actually protrude out from the side quite prominently. The clamping force for both headphones is good. It's pretty similar. They are both quite comfortable to wear for long listening sessions. And I wear glasses as well, so the headphones will go over the spectacle uh, frame. And both are comfortable. The leather that's used on the Mark Levinson has more texture. This is real leather and I really like the texture on this because when I run my finger against it, it doesn't make much sound or noise. And when I wear it, when I adjust the headphone against the side of my head, it does not make much sound. And this inner side is padded as well. And when you press down, you cannot feel the hard component because the padding is quite thick. And this leather padding can be replaced. This is the same leather that is used under the headband. And the cushion here is quite soft as well, just like this cushion. This is the harder part. And you can see the red thread against the black leather. 
the top of the headband is also leather but it's harder and you can see the texture quite prominently i really like this one the leather on the solitaire tee is synthetic leather i don't have any issues with synthetic leather uh, what i mind here is the sound that it makes when i run my finger on the surface i'm going to place my microphone here beside the ear cup so that you can hear the sound as i run my finger on the leather and this is the sound you can expect when you're adjusting the ear cups on your ear I don't like this sound. It's not a big issue, it's just that I prefer less sound, especially when I'm adjusting the ear cup. And this ear cup is slightly smaller than the Mark Levinson. So when I wear this, I can feel my ear inside touching the interior of the ear cup. It's not claustrophobic to that extent, but I do prefer the slightly wider ear cups of the Mark Levinson. And here you can see the red cloth. And if you push in, you can feel the hard components. The passive sound isolation provided by the leather and also on the Mark Levinson is really good. It's so good to the extent that you probably may not need ANC unless you really want to drown out the excessive background noise. And this is the same leather that's used on the headband. The headband is padded on the top and the bottom side, and you can see the Solitaire T branding here. The leather feels good, it's just that I prefer the more matte textured leather on the Mark Levinson. And the stitching is quite well done. The leather padding for both headphones are replaceable. The battery on the Solitaire T is replaceable. The battery on the Mark Levinson is not replaceable, unfortunately. The headband for the Mark Levinson is actually quite big. This is almost like a semi-circle. And the headband for the Solitaire T is just this smaller area here at the top. And the frame here, you can see it's wide. And this is the adjustment you can get. This is metal and this is hard plastic. And this is quite shiny with the prominent T plus A logo there. For the Mark Levinson, this is thinner. This is metal. And this is the adjustment. You can pull both uh, in and out quite easily. On the Mark Levinson, the yoke is actually flushed to the side of the ear cups for the solitaire tee the yoke actually extends out from the ear cup so you can see uh, this is smaller as a result of the design compared to the mark levinson which is bigger and there are two nubs uh, one here and one on the back as the swivel point it may not be obvious, but the ear cup for the Solitaire T is slightly smaller due to this design and also less thick compared to the Mark Levinson. This design is quite flashy. You can see the shiny grills, the Mark Levinson logo, the red bevel edge here and the glossy red color here and this is matte textured metal the build quality for this is very solid solitaire T's design is less flashy and maybe cleaner on this side is actually a touch pad with controls for playback on the other side it's just plain uh, oval this button here is for the transparency shortcut. Now here is the mic input for taking calls and the call quality is all right. And this is the small slip for the noise cancelling mic that's inside. There is also one on the left ear cup. On the Mark Levinson, there are two mics for taking calls, one on each ear cup in front. 
and the noise cancelling mics are located here at the top and also at the bottom the audio quality from calls with these headphones sound pretty similar to me the effectiveness of active noise cancelling for these two headphones again very similar same applies to transparency mode or voice pass mode the quality and the effectiveness is very similar for these two headphones so one is not significantly better than the other when it comes to the audio quality for calls the effectiveness for ANC and the effectiveness for transparency mode one selling point of the Solitaire T is the very foldable design so you can turn the ear cups forward and backwards you can fold the ear cups in like this to make this even more compact although when you pack this inside the case uh, you're not going to be packing it like this you will be packing it like this instead now one huge downside for this foldable design is when you are folding it there are many contact points hard contact points so when you're folding the headphones or when you're just moving the headphones around there will be contact points like this and when you have hard surfaces against hard surfaces this is the metal part against this black metal part chances are you are going to create dents and scratches it's almost inevitable that this will develop scratches over time with usage so throughout the two weeks that i have been handling these headphones i was so careful not to create any scratches and dents so i can see some marks here at the bottom that i did not know how they got there they were not there when i took these earphones out for the first time and on this side i can see some marks as well this cannot be removed with microfiber cleaning cloth if you place the headphones like this on the table the yoke can hit each other and if you place the headphones like this on the table the nub here uh, the ones beneath will be in contact with the table surface and they may develop scratches uh, with contact so with these headphones you really have to get a proper headphone stand to place the headphones i've been using the mark levinson for more than half a year now and i don't pay special attention to the handling to prevent scratches and so far i don't see any scratches on these headphones the one area where you may see scratches is at the USB-C port where you put the cable in but after half a year of use I don't see any scratches here for the solitarity wow you really have to be more careful when it comes to preventing scratches because of all the hard contact surfaces it's like when you buy a new handphone you don't want any scratches on the glass display you know the feeling of trying to prevent scratches on the glass display that's the feeling you will get when you're trying to prevent scratches on these headphones and this is quite pricey so i'm not sure how you will feel if you see a tiny little scratch on that black metal surface let's move on to talk about the controls so this is the power switch one thing i really like about the solitaire t is once you turn it on the next second it will tell you it's connected to bluetooth the bluetooth pairing process is really fast and here you can see the light indicators for the battery i think it's 25 50 75 and 100 percent the battery life can last from 35 hours if you are using high quality mode to 70 hours if you are not using high quality mode and you can see this parallel line design on the aluminum is this called the frame the housing this looks quite nice and on the right side we have the buttons this mode button will switch between ANC on ANC off and high quality mode for ANC, there are three strengths, low, medium, and high, and you can adjust that using the app. 
When you are using high quality mode, the audio quality is better. More specifically, you will be able to hear more details and there is better clarity. When you're using high quality mode, there is no ANC. So it's either ANC or high quality mode. The A button is for the digital assistant such as Siri, Google Assistant or some other digital assistant. And this is the Bluetooth pairing toggle switch. You can turn off Bluetooth completely like this. And to turn on Bluetooth, uh, just push it up for pairing. You can push up for two seconds and it will go into pairing mode. And if you want to reset the headphones Bluetooth settings, just push up and hold it there for five seconds. The color of the light here will show you the Bluetooth codec that is in use. White is for AAC, blue is SBC, red is FX, and yellow is FX HD. And here at the bottom is the 2.5 millimeter audio jack and USB-C port. You can use either of these for audio. If you use this 2.5 millimeter audio jack, you will not have the touch controls here. If you use USB-C, you will still get the touch controls. For the touch controls, you can swipe up and down to adjust the volume forward and backwards to skip tracks, tap, and tap again for play and pause, and tapping will also take and reject calls. Double tap this circle will give you transparency mode and tapping it once again will turn off transparency mode. I personally prefer to have physical buttons for playback controls and volume adjustment, but the touch features here work very well. Let's look at the controls on the Mark Levinson. This ANC button will switch between ANC on, ANC off, and transparency mode. That's the power button and Bluetooth parent button. You can press down for a few seconds to go into Bluetooth pairing mode. And these three buttons are for adjusting the volume. And this button in the middle is to play and pause the music. Both headphones use Bluetooth 5.1 for wireless connection. The Bluetooth codecs supported by Mark Levinson are LDAC, AAC, and FX Adaptive. The Bluetooth codecs supported by Solitarity is AAC, SBC, FX, and FX HD. The Mark Levinson supports pairing to two Bluetooth devices simultaneously, and the connection will switch depending on which device is playing audio. For example, if you connect this to your phone and your tablet and you are playing audio on your phone, the connection will switch to your phone. And once you start using your tablet to play a movie, for example, the connection will switch automatically to the tablet. I find this feature to be very convenient. And this feature is not available with the Solitaire T. If you pair Mark Levinson to more than two devices and you want to switch connection, you have to disconnect with the earlier device before you can switch to the current device. But this is good if you just pair it with two devices because the switching is automatic. With the Solitaire T, you can pair this with many devices, just that when you want to switch between devices, you have to disconnect and connect to the new device. One feature that the Solitaire T has that the Mark Levinson does not have is there is a built-in deck. And when you get digital signal into the earphones, that's the DAC that will convert the digital signal into audio signal. And as mentioned right at the start of the video, the audio quality for both headphones is right up there. So whether or not there is a DAC inside, I don't actually care as long as the audio quality is right up there. For the Mark Levinson, there is only the USB-C port, there is no audio port, so you will have to use USB-C. If you use the USB-C to 3.5mm cable, you will not have the controls here to adjust volume and also ANC. If you use USB-C to USB-C, you will still have those controls. And the audio quality you can get with cable connection and with Bluetooth, for me on this, Mark Levinson is the same. In other words, I am very impressed at the audio quality you can get with the Bluetooth on these headphones because they sound so similar to the audio quality you can get with cable connection. 
One downside to the audio quality for the Mark Levinson is when it comes to digital connection, such as with Bluetooth or with the USB-C cable, I can hear this very faint hissing sound in the background. It's not something that I noticed before, it's just that now that I have two headphones side by side to compare, I can hear that hissing sound now. It's not distracting, it's something my brain will automatically tune out, which is why I haven't noticed it until now. And you get that very faint uh, hissing sound in the background due to the digital connection. But if you use the audio cable, the 3.5 millimeter audio cable and you connect it, it's totally silent when you are playing or not playing anything. So there is no digital hissing sound when you're using the 3.5 millimeter cable. With the Solitaire T, this is dead silent without any hissing sound or interference regardless of whether you are using digital or cable connection. Let's look at the features you can get with the app starting with the Mark Levinson app. This is where you can turn on or off ANC. And whenever you switch between different modes, you will hear some audio feedback from the headphones to let you know exactly which mode you are using. And for ANC, you can choose between high, low, and adaptive. Voice this is voice pass awareness or transparency mode, which will let you hear the surrounding. This will bypass the passive sound isolation to let you hear the surroundings so that you can hear people talk or maybe announcements. And this is the EQ, which is quite limited. It's just limited to adjusting bass. Neutral sounds the best. This is the auto off timer after a certain period of inactivity. And this is on heat detection so when you remove the headphones you can have the music pause this is Solitaire T's app so here you can switch between the different ANC modes and you can choose between the ANC intensity or the strength low medium and high and when you switch between the different modes there will also be audio feedback to tell you which mode you are in when you enable HQ, you will disable ANC. I use Solitaire T mostly with HQ. I don't really use ANC because the passive sound isolation for this is pretty good. And HQ sounds better compared to non-HQ mode. So for EQ, there are six pre-programmed settings you can choose from. They are actually located here at the bottom. That is flat, based, boost, treble, speech, vitalize, and relax. You won't be able to adjust the curve yourself though. And that's pretty much it for this app. The one feature that's missing with this app, at least with version 1.0.2 is there is no shortcut for you to turn on or off transparency mode. All right, to conclude, so which headphones do I like better? I like the Mark Levinson better because I prefer the leather here and the ear cups are bigger. To me, they feel slightly more comfortable. And the ability to switch between two Bluetooth devices automatically is incredibly convenient. I guess the main downside for Mark Levinson um, is the design is kind of bulky. So if you wear this outdoors, this will definitely draw a bit more attention compared to wearing the Solitaire T. For sound quality, it's really subjective. I cannot say which one is better. They are both really good. They are just slightly different. They are just tuned slightly different. Many reviewers find the sound signature or the sound profile for the Mark Levinson to be neutral. I agree with that. When you compare the Mark Levinson with the Solitaire T, the highs are slightly brighter. And because of that, the vocals are able to stand out a bit more because the vocals have more clarity and are more crisp. And the vocals can stand out a bit more compared to the background music. With the Solitaire T, 
it's slightly warmer so the vocals will blend slightly better with the background music so if you prefer your vocals to stand out a bit more perhaps Mark Levinson is the headphones to go for in terms of value for money the Mark Levinson definitely delivers because you can get fantastic audio quality for a price that is 600 US dollars lower compared to the Solitaire T this is really quite pricey to pay that much for a pair of headphones that headphones must be special and whether that headphones is special whether this is special really comes down to personal preference the main downside for this headphones the solar T is the many hard contact surfaces um, so you have to be very careful when handling this to prevent scratches and dents all right i hope this comparison review is useful so you can decide whether or not these headphones are worth the money based on the findings i have presented